On Sunday, September 15, 1963, a bomb ripped through the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama. Four young black girls were killed. Others were maimed and mutilated. Earlier that spring, black children had marched from the church and brave vicious police dogs and fire hoses so the world could see the brutality of segregation. Now, four were dead, killed by a bomb planted by Klansmen, bent on holding back the march for equality. The day after the bombing, a young lawyer, Charles Morgan, spoke at a white businessman's club in Birmingham. It was time to break the silence in the white community, time to speak about who really was to blame for the violence. This is what Morgan said. Four little girls were killed in Birmingham yesterday. A mad, remorseful, worried community asks, who did it? Who threw that bomb? The answer should be, we all did it. Every last one of us is condemned for that crime and the bombing before it and the ones last month, last year, a decade ago, we all did it. Is every little individual who talks about the niggers and spreads the seeds of his hate to his neighbor and his son. The jokester, the crude oaf whose racial jokes rocked the party with laughter, every governor who ever shouted for lawlessness and became a law violator, courts that move ever so slowly and newspapers that timorously defend the law. It is all the Christians and all their ministers who spoke too late in anguished cries against violence. We are 10 years of lawless preachments, 10 years of criticism of law, of courts, of our fellow man a decade of telling school children the opposite of what the civics books say. Yesterday, while Birmingham, which prides itself on the number of its churches, was attending worship services, a bomb went off and an all-white police force moved into action. A police force which has solved no bombings, a police force which many Negroes feel is perpetuating the very evils we decry. Do not misunderstand me. It is not that I think that white policemen had anything whatsoever to do with the killing of these children or previous bombings. It's just that Negroes who see an all-white police force must think in terms of its failure to prevent or solve the bombings and think perhaps Negroes would have worked a little bit harder. The ministers of Birmingham who have done so little for Christianity call for prayer at high noon in a city of lawlessness and in the same breath speak of our city's image. Did those ministers visit the families of the Negroes in their hour of travail? Do they admit Negroes into their ranks at the church? Who is guilty? A moderate mayor elected to change things in Birmingham and who moves so slowly and looks elsewhere for leadership? A business community which shrugs its shoulders and looks to the police and perhaps somewhere else for leadership? A governor who offers a reward but mentions not his own failure to preserve either segregation or law and order? Those four little girls, those four little Negro girls were human beings. They had lived their 14 years in a leaderless city, a city where no one accepts responsibility, where everyone wants to blame somebody else. A liberal lawyer told me this morning, me, I'm not guilty. He then proceeding to discuss the guilt of the other lawyers, the ones who told the people that the Supreme Court did not properly interpret the law. And that's the way it is with Southern liberals. They condemn those with whom they disagree for speaking while they sit in fearful silence. Birmingham, it is a city where four little Negro girls can be born into a second-class school system, live a segregated life, ghettoed into their own little neighborhoods, restricted to Negro churches, destined to ride in Negro ambulances to Negro wards. Local papers on their front and editorial pages call for order, and then exclude their names from obituary columns. And who is really guilty? Each of us. 
each citizen who has not consciously attempted to bring about peaceful compliance with the decisions of the Supreme Court of the United States, every citizen who votes for the candidate with the bloody flag. Every citizen and every school board member and school teacher and principal and businessman and judge and lawyer who has corrupted the minds of our youth. Every person in this community who has in any way contributed during the past several years to the popularity of hatred is at least as guilty or more so than the demented fool who threw that bomb. Birmingham is not a dying city. It is dead. Morgan's speech made him a pariah in Birmingham and led to death threats against him and his family. He moved to Atlanta and went on to win numerous landmark civil rights cases. The South, including the city of Birmingham, was transformed in the process. <laughs> 